hearing from Jen Deer and Water um, from jendeerandwater.com, and I'm Kathy Martilli from the intimacydojo.com. And Jen, we're talking right now because you're going to be presenting at the Woodhull Sexual Freedom Summit on reproductive justice in the front lines, showing up for Indigenous people. And I love that you're talking about it. I knew there were issues, but I never, like, until I'd heard from some other people like you that are standing up and saying, hey, this is an issue. I didn't understand how complex it was. For me, as a native person who is indigenous to Turtle Island, which Turtle Island is what we refer to as North America, um, I feel like I have to constantly remind people, not just of the issues that we face, but that we still exist. Yeah. Um, you know, I recently saw, I can't remember the exact statistic, but it was somewhere in the 60 percentile of Americans don't believe natives still exist. They think we're all dead. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so I, so for me, talking about reproductive justice and in indigenous people is important on so many levels. It, it touches with, you know, environmental issues and issues of environmental racism. You know, it's ableism that we deal with within our communities, the lack of health care, and it's how genocide has played out for us oh, yeah. in so many ways. You know, it's, it's not just the literal murder of our people, it's also the theft of our land, our language, our ceremonies, all of our ways, and that becomes a reproductive justice issue. You know, if we can't practice our own religions, how do we heal from colonization? How do we heal from the sexual assault and the forced and coerced use of um, uh, sterilization on our indigenous women and people body people. You know, it's a queer issue as well because before the white invasion, we a lot of our nations had multiple genders. You know, we didn't do the gender binary. My people didn't anyway. Yeah. So that's a very long winded answer to why you should care about indigenous people and reproductive justice. <laughs> well thank you so much. You're what are one of the one of the big things that you want people to be aware of, like I know that you, you went through kind of a list, but what's one of the, can you draw out a little more, go a little deeper in one of the topic areas? Um, I guess, I, you know, this is something that I want people to take away from any of the work I do, whether it's, you know, writing, organizing, giving presentations like this, is that America as a nation does not, it does not have the right to exist upon this land. And the white man's laws, the white man's policies were not made with us in mind. Um, you know, it gets very frustrating when I, I write about and, and post about issues of, um, you know, the violation of free speech and things of that nature. And a lot of non-natives don't get that, you know, the white man's laws aren't really applicable to us in a lot of ways. Like, we are our own distinct indigenous nations. Like, we're not just a race of people. We are made up of hundreds of in like sovereign nations and we have our own laws our own courts our own ways and what the white man does isn't applicable to us in some ways you know like yes we're forced to deal with colonization but you know i don't look to the bill of rights to to protect me and my people i definitely don't look to the declaration of independence that literally called us merciless savages you know so i think the one thing I want non-natives to walk away with is that, you know, we are our own people, we have our own nations, and America doesn't have the right to exist upon this land. And because of that, it has impacted every single aspect of our life. Oh, I, I can't even begin to, having not walked those shoes, in your shoes, I, I can't begin to imagine having your whole culture erased in a lot of ways. And just from a purely pragmatic, for someone that is considers them an American, themselves American, and we re, we should be here. I, I don't think that's. I'm not saying that's my belief. I'm saying that from that prag, pragmatic point of view, there's so much wisdom in the cultures that that, like even like a lot of the accountability process and the social justice process that we're learning from, comes from indigenous people and how they dealt with things in their tribes. Like there's so much wisdom there that has been pushed to the side or erased or ignored and and never mind the people that are suffering because they're not seen like not being seen and heard is so painful to a human being like, yeah. yeah what are yeah. some of the so reproductive justice is the top of your title like what is what are some of the issues people run into around reproductive justice as an indigenous person um 
Well, I think that it's heavily dependent upon, I feel like, which nation you are. Yeah. Because once again, all of our nations have, you know, we have similarities, but we also have very different ways of being and doing. And we've also had different interactions with the colonizer. Um, so I think that that's important to remember is that our experiences are not monolithic. We're not a monolithic people. Um, but some of the things that I really talk about in this presentation, um, I talk quite a bit about environmental racism mm -hmm. and the colonization of our lands. Um, you know, how the wood, the mineral oils, like the fish, all of the things that white people have had for hundreds of years came at our expense. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that is very heavily tied with environmental racism, you know, the pipeline issues. Um, and then, but also I talk about how that racism brings more sexual violence towards our people. You know, it brings the man camps, which for those who aren't familiar, a man camp is just a, like a makeshift set up by a pipeline or mining company. They throw a bunch of trailers together and these almost entirely non-native, mostly white men, set up top in these trailers and then they go on the reservation and rape our men, they murder us, they kidnap us, they traffic us, and then they know that they do it because Supreme Court case law has said that we natives don't have the right to try non-natives to commit violent act on our, or any crime on our, on our land. Yeah, and if, if, I was, you know? if I traveled to Switzerland and I committed a crime, they have every right to try me. Like Right, right. Yeah, but we don't, and so because of that, like, it's so it gets so complex. It's the pipeline companies. It's the people, the men who just are rapists and know they can get away with it on the res. You know, I also talk about the issues of police brutality and other brutalities through the systems, like the boarding school era. Um, <clears throat> you know, our children have been taken from us for generations. And, you know, once upon a time they were placed in boarding schools and now our kids are being taken from us and put in foster care and juvenile detention centers. So like I talk some about that in this presentation, you know, I talk about the forced and coerced use of sterilization and birth control on our women. Um, many of us, the only healthcare access we have is Indian health services, which is ran, it's funded by the federal government, and it doesn't even come close to meeting our needs. Um, so, you know, it's like we have the, you know, when people talk about how natives have free health care and all of these things as if it's, you know, some great perk, it's like, well, one, those were negotiated in treaties. And the U.S. government doesn't get to just willy-nilly break treaties with other nations, so they don't have the right to do that to us. Yeah, though but, they, they have so many times. Like, yeah. Well, here's this yeah. awful piece of land. Oh, there's gold there. Please move. We're giving you an even worse piece of land while we take the resources. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it was it was tough when I first started putting this presentation together because it was like, my God, there's so many interlocking aspects of the lack of reproductive justice for Native people. And I, I you know, I don't want to overload people. I want people to learn and to walk away also with ideas of how to be engaged. But there's just so much to it. It's so complex, you know? Absolutely. I, I'm so, you know, thank you for all your labor and, and energy put into this because I think there's so much, like, I know I've, I'm, I have so much to learn on this topic and I, I love that you're teaching and helping people be aware. And I, I, you know, why is Woodhull a good place for you to share this? Why are you? Well, I mean, I think that anywhere I have the opportunity, to help teach and give voice to any of my communities, native or otherwise, um, is a space I want to be. And I feel like with Woodhall, you know, there are going to be people coming in that the majority of them don't know much about native people. They don't know much about these issues for us. But I think that it's going it's to be a place where the people are open to learning. Mm -hmm. And not just learning, but also taking that education, that knowledge, and moving forward with it to do good with it. Um, and, you know, to me, reproductive justice, like, it's not, it's about saving my people. It's about our lives and going from just also surviving to thriving. Mm -hmm. But because of all of the violence that we've had inflicted upon us, a lot of us are also not in touch with our own sexuality. Um, we're afraid of it or we've completely absorbed all of the 
horrible messages around sex and sexuality from the colonizer. And so I feel like that's another really important aspect to like being at Woodhull is because I want I want all of us natives to find our way to that like that sexual freedom and that pleasure and, and all of those wonderful great things. <laughs> yeah, oh I, I love that. And I I do I find Woodhull a really great place because we're all wanting to like we're all have a very common mission even if we have different groups we're supporting or different doorways we're going through, there's a lot of passion and it really, I find it very recharging. This battle can be so, like there's nights I come home and I'm just like, uh, there's not a lot left. Yeah. And then just <laughs> being around other people like, oh, I'm not alone and I can learn from these people. That's a really good tip. I didn't think about that one. It's, yeah. I go every year because I love that. I love that energy. Yeah. Um, so if someone wanted to learn more about reproductive justice and, and the, the topics you're talking about, what's a good place for them to go? Like, where could they find, besides, I mean, they should definitely go to your talk at Woodhull, um, yeah. but what else can, they, where else can they look to get more information on this? Because it is, it's, it's, if we heard about this happening in another country, we would be up in arms or be people protesting and raising money, um, and donations. And yet this happens in our country and most of us don't even know about it. Like, where can we go to get more information? Um, well, there's a few organizations that I really like. Um, they may not necessarily use the term reproductive justice, but the work they are doing is part of reproductive justice. Um, so IEN, the Indigenous Environmental Network, they're really great. They do a lot of work around treaties, sovereignty, um, Indian ra environmental racism, things of that nature. Um, I also really love, um, it's the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center. Mm -hmm. They are great. They do a lot of work around sexual assault, domestic violence, trafficking, healthcare issues. Um, and then the Two-Spirit Nation, um, that's another, that was started um, by Candy Brings Plenty um, at uh, Standing Rock. Uh, one of our relatives, Courage, uh, started the Two-Spirit Camp, and then Candy Brings Plenty created the Two-Spirit Nation, which is a, an organization. So I think that's another really great one, to because it reminds everybody that, you know, we have all these multiple genders and, and identities and things that we're working to decolonize. And um, another one that I really love is the... I, I have acronyms in my mind, so I always try to botch it when I say the names. Um, it's the, the National, is it National no, Native Youth Sexual Health Network. That's what it is. And they're based in Canada, and they do a lot of really great work, too. Mm -hmm. So um, there's so many places that people could go to learn and engage, but those are some of my favorite organizations. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for your generosity and all you've shared. And I can't wait to see your talk at Woodhull um, in a couple months. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, I'm excited. <laughs> um, if, if you're watching this and you have questions or um, any ideas that you want to share, please leave them below and we'll try to get them answered for you. <laughs>